There are a few places in the world like Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Nestled deep in the heart of the Smokies, it's part historical monument to the Appalachian Days Gone Past and part carnival ride. There's a reason it's called Vegas in the Smokies. For those on a budget looking to get away and see some amazing natural and, let's be honest, unnatural sights, Pigeon Forge is hard to beat. Whether you're into little people wrestling or Red Skelton impersonators or playing with a monkey, there's something for everyone in Pigeon Forge. Even dinosaurs. For us, it was a Thanksgiving weekend escape. So we threw a giant bag on the roof of our car in Gainesville and hit the road. Look, Tracy, we're leaving Florida. So it says, thank you for visiting Florida. We're going to be in Georgia in a few seconds. We traveled with Tracy and Chet to Tennessee before, but... This was really the first time that Tracy got to get the full experience of what a road trip can be. She's five years old and about to be six, and I remember really starting to form my vivid bits of nostalgia for vacations at about her age. So we wanted to find a way to make this one memorable. Originally, we were going to take a pop-up, but for various reasons, especially the weather, as you'll see in some of this footage, we opted instead for staying in campgrounds that had primitive-style cabins, Camping isn't the right word for it, neither is glamping. Think of it more as renting the world's most basic Airbnb. At least it's clean, there's no hidden fees, and you don't have to worry too much about accidentally stumbling upon someone's kink dungeon. Our first stop in Perry, Georgia was the Fair Harbor RV Resort. The rented cabin was clean, well-equipped, and had plenty of room for two adults and two littles. It was also very close to a Walmart which was handy for our Thanksgiving dinner prep and maybe a little diecast hunting. Lots of five packs in this place and a fairly well-stocked group of diecasts for being this close to the Thanksgiving holiday. I guess everyone was waiting for Black Friday. Lots of really good premiums in this one. We'll see what I got from there later. Back on the road, we stopped where most Americans stop on their interstate travel, Cracker Barrel. And while their collection was small, it was surprising this matchbox set is several years old and they have these cool little construction vehicles also some motor max 118 scale which i hadn't seen in a while and of course the mangled pile of misfit toys that is the 143rd to 132nd scale pullback diecast selection at every cracker barrel once we crossed over into tennessee we stopped at a pilot and if you're a regular listener to diecast breakdown you'll know that pilot carries green lights sometimes it depends on the location, and this was one of those locations. It was, so far, the largest selection of green lights I had seen at any normal store. Key phrase in there, so far. It was a great selection. Unfortunately, I had pretty much everything they were offering I would be interested in. Around the corner, they had that typical die-cast assortment that you find at every convenience store across our fair country. We should do a story on that sometime. Where do all those cars come from? Why are they everywhere? Why does no one want them? Do you want them? Let me know in the comments. A few more hours down the road and we were in Pigeon Forge. So we stopped at another Walmart because we had to pick up our Thanksgiving dinner, which we would be cooking on a camp stovetop. And again, a very nice selection of diecasts, especially premiums. I think gearing up for Black Friday might be a good time to go hunt big box stores for diecasts because everybody's waiting. If you don't mind paying full price. And they don't usually get sales anyway. At last, we arrived at Gateway to the Smokies Campground. This was a much more primitive type cabin. It was just two beds, a mini fridge, a microwave, and a TV. No bathrooms, but we were only one cabin away from the bathhouse, and it was a delightfully clean and charming environment, if not that rustic. We were just a few blocks from the main drag at Pigeon Forge, and my little rock hound of a daughter was about to get her mind blown. Stay tuned for that adventure in a Tested by Tracy video. As with most Thanksgiving shopping, we forgot a few things, so we stopped at a Foo City Express, which I didn't know was a thing. And, again, a surprisingly decent assortment of diecasts for a store that was about the size of a CVS, including the new winter bottles. So I grabbed the Brat, and she grabbed the Carbonator because she likes purple. With no real Thanksgiving plans, we toured the strip to see what we could see, so we stopped in at Country Mills Crafts to see what they had to offer. And again, a surprisingly decent selection of diecasts, although I will say that they're prices on their new Auto Worlds and Johnny Lightnings and Greenlights were a little optimistic. Everything was $18.95, which 
okay, if you really need it, I guess you could pay that. What surprised me was the vintage cars were actually a fairly decent price, and I'll show you what I got from there in a little bit. But yeah, word to the wise, if you're going to do any antique and collectible shopping, probably best not to do it in one of the biggest tourist destinations in the country. Everybody knows that you're there to spend money, and there's enough foot traffic that they can command whatever price they want, and eventually somebody's going to buy it. Yes, even a $29 green light chase. Moving a little further off the drag, we found a couple of really nice little antique malls that had surprisingly good selections and much more reasonable prices on their diecasts. What's this down here? You see? Cars. But oh boy, hang on, because I was about to blow my child's mind once again with... That one is up to Yeah. What do you think, T? You want to go take a look at it? This car is called the General Lee, and it was on a TV show. It looks so nice. Yeah, remember we don't touch. You just look. So interesting. So this is one of those uh, Crown Vicks that they turned into a charger. There's a spider web on it, Daddy. Yeah, it says, "Please do not climb on the car." So it's a toy car of this. Yeah. You see it? <laughs> That's right. We went to Cooter's place. There's a couple of these locations across the south, and I'd always wanted to go to one. Because, yeah, I still got some uh, nostalgia for this show that I grew up watching, and I knew that they would have a lot of green lights. Specifically, Cooter's tow trucks, which I did not have in my collection and were always too expensive when I saw them online. I wasn't quite prepared for just how many green lights there would be, and again, a surprising amount of Johnny Lightning Country chargers and barn finds. No deals really to be had there, at least I thought not. The tow trucks were supposedly marked down from $19.99 to $14.99, and the cars were the same price, but if you bought two, it was $24.99, which... Yeah, that's a lot to pay for a Johnny Lightning or a green light. But, again, if it's something you have to have and you can't find anywhere else, they definitely have it in supply. Seeing the Crown Vic Charger outside, I was surprised to see a much more accurate actual Dodge Charger on the inside, although this one is missing a roll cage. There were also some non-Dukes of Hazard related die casts, and they were about the same price. Although, after looking a little further, I did find a bargain shelf with some $5.99 green lights or two for $9.99, which is actually a very good price for green lights. There were also a few entertaining little dioramas and tableaus of key locations in the show. It's a delightful visit if you're a fan of the show in particular. Otherwise, there's probably not a lot for you, and the constant blasting of Dixie horns from everybody in the store pressing every button they can find might get a little bit on your nerves. But if you grew up watching the show on CBS, or like I did, watching the reruns on TNN, it's a nice little trip down memory lane. Tracy was quite taken with the orange charger, although once she discovered there were versions of the souvenirs that she could get with a pink charger on them, she knew exactly what she wanted to get. The car of this one. Yeah. But it was orange, not pink. What do you think? Pink. Pink? You got a pink frisbee? Yeah. All right, you ready to go? Let's go see what's next. My brother lives in Knoxville, and my parents were up visiting him, so we met to grab dinner in, again, Cracker Barrel, because we are an imaginative bunch. And we're traveling with small children, so it's nice to know that there's going to be a safe, relatively quiet place with high chairs and easy-to-eat stuff on the menu. This Cracker Barrel had muscle machines, which I hadn't seen in a Cracker Barrel before, and of course the ubiquitous three-packs and some oversized chargers and some oversized monster trucks. Saying goodbye to the Smokies is always bittersweet, but it was good to have a little getaway, clear our heads, and make our way back home. The cabins were a surprisingly fun experience, and honestly not a terrible alternative to a hotel or an Airbnb. Especially since both places we stayed had no real hidden fees, it was... The price you paid, and tax, and you're on your way. Of course, no trip back with small children is not going to have its emergency stops at convenience stores, and we stopped in a CVS, so of course I had to check. And again, there's those 130-second pullback diecasts with the most random assortment of vehicles you could possibly think of. 
I saw a Dodge Caliber in there once. Weird. All right, that was the trip. Let's get back to me in the studio and see what I found. Okay, so now comes the fun part of the video, the haul. Um, I'm going to get to this in a second. This was my birthday present for my brother. And for, from what I think it is, I thought it was worth sharing with y'all. Because it is a pretty big box and it's making that sound that only tiny cars make. But before we get to that, I wanted to show off my finds from the Smokies. I, of course, had to get a Cooter's bag from Cooter's shop. Uh, they had a, as I mentioned, bargain section uh, where I got the taxi from Taxi to round out my taxi driver and other taxis collection. I'm hoping somebody does a DC cap at some point. I might have to make one myself. Uh, there's the uh, Cooter's brown truck. That would be the one from the early series. And uh, I like that they included the uh, wood board bumper on there. Uh, you got the logo. You got the nice steel wheels. That was a 1970 Chevy truck with a drop-in uh, tow hook on the bed. And then the more famous 1969. Nice Chevy tow truck with the wide body on it. And... Uh, so these were $14.99 a piece, which is, I think, a fair price for this one. The other one might be a little on the high side because it doesn't have the big fancy tow rig on the back of it. But I do appreciate uh, the detailing and weathering on this. It looks pretty darn good for a uh, mass-produced vehicle. In fact, let's snip this bad boy open and take a look. Free the piece other YouTube channels would call it. And I just could not get over how many of these they had. I guess, you know, you don't want to run out of Cooter's tow truck in Cooter's spot, but that's the most I've ever seen anywhere as far as green light cars go. It contains one diecast vehicle. Yes, it does. Alrighty, and there it is. Alright. So, yeah, I like the uh, weathering on the windshield. You got a nice mist of filth over the whole thing. So, not too shabby for mass produced weathering, although, I'll check that out. A wheel, a little wonky, but yeah. That's Uncle Hunt. I don't know why I said that. I also got a few stickers uh, for my toolbox. Uh, just some cool things. I thought this would look cool in the truck. The service sticker. My daughter got a sticker too. And that's what that is. Alright, well, uh, while I was in the Pigeon Forge area, I went to a antique shop, as you saw in the video. And here's the AMC Javelin I got for 8 bucks. Minus 25% off. I thought that was a pretty good price for a relatively solid uh, version of this one. It's got a little bend there, but that's not too bad. And uh, a lot of good potential in this one for a custom. They also had this Road Champs, which I thought was very interesting. It's a Road Champs Mr. 2, first generation. And uh, it's a little big for 164, but uh, copyright 1987. Uh, Harrison, New Jersey. And I thought that's just. A very cool casting of a vehicle that did not get too much die-cast love back in the day. Alrighty, the other thing that I got from there was this, uh, which was marked down to $14 and then another 25% off, and I thought this was a very good price for this one. It's got a very nice Ford Econoline uh, front end on it. It's uh, from the Monster Garage series. They turned this into a uh, party yacht. And I like the caption on the back says, Monster Garage's biggest challenge to date. Which means they were cranking these out while the show was still running. And uh, navigates on land and water. Unique tackle box design. Large flat boat deck. Transforms from a 40 pass 20 passenger school bus into a floating propeller driven party boat. And uh, yeah, wild, wild stuff. So, and, uh, you know, friend of the show, Fireball Tim Lawrence, was uh, 
on an episode. Not uh, this one, but he worked on the Panaz that was the flying car. But anyway, there's a ton of potential with this one for a Car Wars or Gasland style build. Right, quick insert, because I forgot these ones. This is a Matchbox EV tractor that uh, I found at Walmart. And then these are the cars that we got from the basket at the Antique Mall. Classic Black Ball era car. Can't remember the name of this one offhand, but it's based on a real car. And it's gorgeous, and I love to do a barn find on this one. This is the Pontiac Bonneville. Another great casting, even if it does have the orange lenses. And I got a couple of tuned guys, because I'm kind of unofficially collecting tuned cars now. Just because they amuse me, and I think it'd be fun to do a diorama that's all tuned cars. And this uh, awesome Matchbox VW bus. Uh, just a great casting, and I love the open roof on it. A lot of uh, detailing potential with this one. All right, back to the rest Those of the. Those are the vintage ones I found. Now onto the recent stuff. I finally got the TR6 from Matchbox. I found a few of them uh, in our Walmart trips. Very nice, uh, separate metal piece for the engine, plastic base. Uh, does have rubber tires on it, as is expected from the Collector series. Detailed front tampo and rear tampo with license plate and a little British flag in the corner. I thought that was very cool, and of course you gotta love British racing green and tan. Although that tan is a little orangey for my tastes, but yeah well. So, uh, I also got this uh, Fiat 131 Abarth, which I thought was a very cool car. You know, we love all things boxy here on Diecast Media Network, and this is no exception. You might call it the 510 of Italian vehicles. If you wanted to get punched by Mark, that's what you might say. But, uh, yeah. Very cool rally car. It's got a built-in roll cage. Tampos front and back. The license plate says Hot Wheels. Uh, but, yeah. Very nice, very detailed, lots of texture on the grill. It's not just a, a tampo, it's actually textured on there, and then they tampoed on top of that, which is impressive. So, amazing what they can print on these days. Um, got a few main lines. They're just kind of nice. Um, ones that I like this year. Uh, never have enough Jeep Scramblers, and I really like this Alfa Romeo. And uh, I know the Barbie car is kind of a controversial thing with the four seats, but I love it. It makes it look like a ride car at like a kiddie fair or something. And, uh, you know, this is just a really cool uh, project truck with the missing hood and front clip. And there's a lot of potential with that one. So I like having a few of those handy. And, oh, there's one more antique find before I get to the big pile. Um... Oh, and uh, I got the Super Brat from Food City. You can watch my Food City uh, Torino build where I explain why I just did that. But uh, it was cool that they had die casts, and I love the Brat casting, so I got that. I also got this from an Antiques Mall, which is funny because it's not really antique. It's like from 2022. But the lady was very nice and very kind to Tracy, and Tracy was very kind to her, and I loved this casting, and I was only able to get one while it was out, so I got one. Removable bed, cool rooftop camper deployed, uh, a lot of cool detailing opportunities there, and of course, my favorite color combo, red, orange, and yellow. All right. Uh, not done yet. One more. Two more. This is another bargain find at Cooter's. 78 Dodge Monaco Taxi from the A-Team. Don't remember this car from the movie, but I always loved getting little taxi bubbles for my cars. So it was worth it just for that and the cool cop rims. And uh, there's a lot of useful potential in that one. And I also got this one uh, from the uh, Boulevard series, the uh, Mercedes. I uh, can't remember what's special about this Mercedes. What is it? 190E. 2.5, 16. Um, just a really cool casting. Uh, it's a little more modified than I like my castings to be, or a little too on the performance end. I'd like it better if it was more just a basic E-Class. Um, but very nice details, great wheels, great color. And uh, yeah, 
Nice to have this one in the collection. All right, now. Now? Now. Yes. All right, here we go. Diving in. This could take a while. All right, we got a Bucky sticker with a Dodge Charger looking thing. That's cool. We got Hallmark A100 Christmas ornament. It's very thoughtful of him. I'm curious about the scale on this. Looks to be about, I'd say maybe 148 scale. It's got your classic bristle brush Christmas tree. Some presents embedded in the bed. Then it's not open. It says 2021 on the back, but we all know what year it is. Um, yeah, nothing too exciting on the bottom. They got the tire color right. It's a nice blackish brown color. Uh, but yeah, very nicely detailed A100. So, will be a welcome addition to the Christmas tree. And uh, let's dive in. Let's see what we find. Okay, we got a, looks like, a, I think this is the Buick Stalker. Nope, Chevy Lumina from Matchbox. Wow. It even says it right there. I'm awake. It's been a long day. We just got back from the road and I wanted to record this while I was thinking about it. Phil Parsons, White Rose Collectibles. So, that's interesting. But there's a fun story behind that one. There's a lot of stories that go into the Tampa work of these things that a lot of people don't think about. Okay, we got a Yatming Blazer. At least, yeah, Blazer. Uh, wind windows have been knocked loose. It's missing a rear uh, bumper, but, you know, the kind of builds I do, that won't be a problem. This one's got a delightful rattle. Oh, that's why. It's a crack up. Wow, this is a really clean crack up, too. Just love these things as a kid and as a grown up. Mine was much more the worse for wear because I could not stop cracking it. But this one is gorgeous. Almost. Besides a few little bites. Mint. So cool. I'll let my kids play with the more beat up ones. Oh, uh, this is a no name. No, it's not a no name. It's a Z. CRX. It's a fun casting. It is a plastic metal mashup, but uh, where it's more plastic than metal, it seems. But I like it. Good version of a very stock looking CRX. Hmm. Oh, this is cool. Corgi Jr. Range Rover police vehicle. It's missing one of the nubs and all of the wheels and probably something back there but that is a lot of custom potential there all right what else we got if it's not out yet uh be sure to keep an eye out for our car wars interview because uh those guys uh jimmy and randy are awesome and uh it's a really cool game we're hoping to raise some awareness about the no name Monaco and uh, just learn a lot about you know creating a game and oh look at that it's missing the oven but that's okay look at the body on this thing is in really nice shape I had one very similar to this that was the more detailed tempo but that's still very cool um, and uh, you know I think Car Wars is due for a little love from the diecast community because they made a game in 164 scale and we should know about it it's a matchbox ford thunderbird getting pretty banged up but this would be a really cool post-apocalyptic racer um let's see oh a fast ones from kenner stock shocker very interesting design kind of lamborghini kind of mercedes c111 looking thing that's very cool and uh these things used to have their own unique license plate each one had a unique license plate on the back uh, u.s state and a special number that was unique to it all right it's that fair lady 2000 from hot wheels very nice casting mercedes benz c-class Daimler Chrysler this feels Maisto to me, but it does not say Maisto. Um, number 6066. Interesting. 
Alright. Oh, that's a little big. Oh, look at that. A bandit Trans Am. 78 Pontiac Firebird. Wow, that is, uh, they were not messing around with their, uh, uh, GM hologram there. It's bigger than the actual available space for it. It's really cool, though. I haven't seen one where it's, like, recessed 3D lenticular. That's very cool. Uh, I should actually, I think I'm going to peel that off and put that on my desk right now before it loses any more of its sticky. Uh, huh, very fun. That's going on the disc. For sure. There we go. Alright, we'll save that one. Do, 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 do. Ah, another classic matchbox. Range Rover. Is this the one that rotated? Well, if it did, it doesn't anymore. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it does. Oh, look at that. Somebody bit the snot out of that wheel, but look at that siren still spins around. Classic gold wheel from the Blackwall era, Mustang Cobra. Great casting. They built the uh, lenses into the uh, glass, but also the grill is built into the glass too. It's a very interesting work with the shadow. That's one I should ask um, Larry about the next time he's on, because it's such a clever design to work the, the plastic into the body like that and get a body stripe, get lensed tail lamps to make Mr. David John's happy, and uh, it's amazing what they were doing, what he was doing with you know very little. And if you get a chance to check out that interview, when that comes out, that's going to be a real delight for a lot of people. It's like a very groovy casting, Matchbox Jeep. It's got rubber tires. That's interesting. Is this custom? This is, yeah, this is custom. Somebody customized this. Oh, that's cool. Nice wheels. Good choice. Love getting customs from other people, even if I don't know who they are. Chrysler 300. It feels Hot Wheels, and it is. Is that plastic? Yep, plastic body metal base. Interesting. Alright, let's see what else we got. So some of these, Justin finds these in antique malls and flea markets, and he uh, sends me photos of some, and I give him a yay or nay, and sometimes he surprises me. Uh, Corky Jr.'s Whiz Wheels, that's cool. Don't have this one, but Myers makes. It's got a built-in uh, the engine bay. Nice steering wheel. Huh. Definitely one I did not have in my collection before. Or my supply, I should say. Utility trailer, this is an old Matchbox Honda M-Cycle, so trailer. So there was a motorcycle on this at one point, as evidenced by the notches. But, uh, cool uh, trailer. You got some utility boxes in there that are nicely detailed. There's a lot of potential there with that one. Alright. No name 57 Chevy. These are fun fodder for uh, crushed and destroyed vehicles. They're not a lot of detail to them, but uh, you can mangle them up pretty good. LAPD. I'm pretty sure the LAPD never used one of these Mercedes vans, but uh, hey, Maisto, good on you. Because um, this is still a really cool casting, a very nice casting. But, uh, you know, I know they work with the castings that they have. So, no shade to Eddie and the gang over there. Check out his interviews as well. He was a lot of fun. Uh, looking forward to ha having Eddie back on again. Uh, this is an, one of the more premium versions of the Matchbox Ford LTD. Uh, been painted. Are those? This one might have been mildly customized as well because that's a lot of slop on there. Hmm. I don't know. Leave it. Uh, leave in the comments if uh, this thing had painted headlights and taillights on it. It doesn't strike me as... I mean, it does have the nicer bar with the red and the blue, so it would have probably been a more high-end version of it. 
Doesn't look like it's been knocked apart, though. Interesting. Oh, this is cool. Chevy square body tow truck. Looks like it's been mooshed slightly. This is one of the ones that would light up and do things. So uh, it's probably got a battery decaying in it somewhere. Um, that's cool. Good potential there. Alrighty. Corgi Whiz Wheels Land Rover. That's a very cool one as well. It's got a little... That's an interesting design. I haven't seen one like that where it traps going down and then that part flexes. Nice grill. It's got the classic Corgi's out as in uh, body panels. But once it's painted up, it's not that noticeable. Ooh, the world's coolest car company, Hot Wheels. So this is part of the Crashers series. They did a few monster trucks. And so this one, as it folds out, the door opens and uh, it's got a little trigger here that sets it off and uh, yeah this is one of the coolest uh, die casts out there because it's a pretty cool uh, wreck simulation even if it doesn't really like crumple any panels or anything but you know the door popping open and the frame bending that is very cool I think the Crasher series is underrated and not appreciated at all in its time. All right, these are getting harder and harder to find. Uh, Hot Wheels, that's a licensed Ferrari. This is the 308 GTB, obviously. Uh, great casting, and uh, always nice to have more Ferraris in the mix, especially early 80s Ferraris. Ooh, I do love this one. That brief period of time when uh, Mr. Petty ran a Monte Carlo. That was his last championship year, too, 79. And uh, not too easy to find this particular body style in diecast 164 scale, so nice to have that one as well. And uh, another representati representation of Mr. Petty's vehicles. All right, this looks like a kid custom. Those are fun. Uh, made in China P397 uh, doesn't have it on here but this screams Z um, or Zilmax to me so somebody put some chrome paint on it and some black paint so that's cool I always encourage kids to drill and paint and modify their vehicles especially if they don't know what they're doing because are they gonna learn well, this is an interesting one. It's like a stretch limo uh, Peugeot. <laughs> or is it Peugeot or Renault? Yeah. Look at that. I'm sure it was neither Peugeot or Renault now that I think about it. Anyway. Hot Wheels Range Rover. Great classic 80s design there. Tampos are still in pretty good shape. BMW 3 Series 328i. It's a Maisto. Another really good casting from them. Very well proportioned. It just doesn't have any detail. But they keep the prices low and um, there's a lot of gold in these castings if you're willing to put in the effort. And honestly, it's not that much effort. All right, what else we got? Oh, this is a De Tomaso Pantera GTS. Another one that feels very uh, Zilmexy, but has no name on it. It's De Tomaso Pantera on the top, GTS. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, now we got a case here, and we got some clear stuff. Let's start over here. We got a couple of. We got a black wall and we got a red line. Look at that. That's not too bad for a red line and a, a black wall of the, the same casting. And they're both complete, it seems. They're all there. These grills like to break. So that is a complete red line. Very cool. Oh, that's fun. Vintage VWs. Uh, play art. Uh, these are. Play arts are really tricky to come by. 
at least where I live. That's cool. It's got the uh, sunken headlights that are part of the plastic, kind of like the Hot Wheels one. It's got a nice protruding bumper. And the Matchbox one, which is, I think, one of the better castings out there. Great for making Herbies, because it's a 62, Herbie was a 63. They're essentially identical. Um, has the canvas top and the right little uh, license plate light. And we got a Datsun 510 with the roll cage and some weird kind of fantasy VW bus looking thing. What's that called? Quamby. Okay, cool. Got kind of a cyberpunk vibe to it. 67 Hot Wheels Custom Fleet Side Redline Hong Kong. So, you know, nothing too special, but I do love the Fleet Side design and I have wanted to get one of my own. And uh, this one looks pretty complete. It's been bent to run faster. So that's very cool. Um, actually, I think it's supposed to have a flat bed uh, on it. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's missing, but that's very easily replaced, and uh, I'm gonna do something cool and custom with it anyway. Looks like somebody already started, put some moon stuff on it. Maybe I'll do a moon theme on it. Alrighty. Now, what's in here? Love this case. I uh, got this in Oklahoma with that run of dollar um, red lines, and uh, gave it to Justin because I didn't have room in my luggage to bring it back. But uh, now it's back in my position, and I love it because it's so random. You've got a Dodge Murata, you've got the fancy Packard Cadillac thing with the <laughs> fancy house in the background and construction vehicles, and I, I just like that the fancy house has got as much presence as the Murata Stalker. So um, I bet Larry designed that too, because that would be of the time when he was doing all of the design work himself. All right, what do we got here? Um, Hot Wheels later model Trans Am, that's cool. Oh, cracked, but hey, R308 GTS. Looks mostly there. Very Magnum PI looking car. The Flubber Thunderbird, which was, uh, I forget where this was, a, um, a toy. It was in one of the fast food chains, but it's a fantastic casting. And it feels like it was just made by, you know, someone. I don't, I don't know where it was made or by who. But let's, uh, let's free this guy, let it breathe for the first time in 25 years. Manufactured by Johnson Grossfield, Inc., China. I don't know, but it's a great casting. Well, I think I just broke one of the taillights off it. That's funny. Yep, it's in there. All right, shove it back in so we don't lose it. All right, what do we got? Got a Maisto Studebaker Starliner? I didn't think they were called the Starliner, but okay. Um, yeah, there we go. That's cool. Got a Hot Wheels Dune Buggy. Nope, Matchbox Dune Buggy. Wow, I really am tired. I like this one because it's got a, a separate engine in there, so you can cut that out, use some other stuff. Uh, this is a Yatming Chevy Love. I know this one. Great casting. Love this one. Haha. <laughs> L-U-V. Uh, all right. Getting a little slap happy now. This is a really cool one for modifying. It's a metal metal. One of the last of the metal metals. But it's got this whole engine sitting out here that you can chop out. You've got this box you can chop out. You've got some, you know running boards and bumpers and stuff that you can use on other stuff. It's a it's a great uh, car for uh, scrapping. Super modified. Or just, you know, use it as is. I'm not your mom. Do what you want. This is interesting. This feels like uh, one of the Ertl ones. Yep, that's what it is. Ertl 71 Charger. Missing the grill. Hood's still there. Engine's still there. Look at that an engine. So, this one got loved hard and thrown to the wayside. But, uh, perfect candidate for a junker. Especially since it's missing, you know, the trunk. 
It's kind of cool. It's got a little toolbox in the back there. And, uh, yeah. Love those. Anytime I can pick up one of those Ertl American Muscle Cars, I will, because they have opening trunks, which means you can remove the trunk lid. All right. Speaking of things that are normally missing their lids, this Ford Capri from Matchbox from the super fast days. Great, great engine inside this thing. Look at it, sir. It's incredibly detailed. Not even just for the time, just in general. It's a plastic piece, completely separate from the body and base, which are metal metal. It's missing the tab for the tail light, uh, for the trailer, but I do not care about that. This thing is intact, which means it is really going to be useful for a custom later. I forget what these caterum, that's what it is. Very cool casting. It's got these nice floating fenders. Again, great donation material, as well as this side pipe and this roll bar and these wonderful seats. Look at those seats. Little detail paint in the uh, seat belts and you've got a lot of potential in this caterum casting. Another one to pick up if you're a customizer whenever you see it. What else we got? Turbo. Made in China, no name, split bumper, 70-ish Camaro. 70 and a half, I think. So when they started the split bumper and they did it for a few years. What else we got? Got a Majorette made in France. A pair of motorcycles. This would be great for leaning up against the uh, back of a garage. Do they pop out? I mean, I'm sure they will if I push hard enough, but that's interesting. They're very well attacked there. All right, I'm not going to force it. Am I kidding? I'm going to force it. All right. So you just push with your fingernail. And huh, out it comes. Just add some tabs to it to get some handlebars. Wheels aren't bad. Feels like it would be about 164 scale. Does not have the actual scale on here. Sometimes Major likes to do that. All right, what else we got? This looks promising. Vintage Vauxhall Cresta from Lesney. Definitely smaller than 164, but very cool. All the same. Definitely not one I had before. You got a Skyline. That's a relatively recent Hot Wheels casting, but it's a great one. What else we got? Maisto, Suzuki, Little Samurai. Again, this one is really, really nice. Great grill, great spare tire. Not too shabby interior detailing either. And I think it originally had some kind of cap on the back here. But very nice casting. Another Maisto, Mercedes. This looks like a, a Z. Yes, it is. 260 Z. Not too many representations of the 260 as they jump from the 240 to the 280 pretty quick. But look at that. Got detailed uh, inside the doors. It's got a three spoke steering wheel, although this one's broken. Uh, it's Majorette doing Majorette stuff. 160th scale, at least they're honest. Still pretty close. There's even little ridges in there to represent the uh, rear window defogger. What else do we got? This is cool. This is a pullback. Feels like a pullback. Nope. Oop. <laughs> well, it doesn't pull back anymore. Kind of a Willy's looking thing. All right, what else we got? I see rubber tires. And an AA Arcuda. Johnny Lightning. Looks like somebody started to customize this one because uh, 
that's a screw. Not sure what they did with it. Do anything under the hood? Oh, I see they painted up here black. Interesting. Oh, had it. There it is. Oh, didn't do anything under the hood, but somebody was trying to do something with this guy. Oh. Alright, what else we got? We got a giant lightning mercury cougar. Great casting. This is one of their earlier ones, so it's not as good as their ones now, but it's still pretty good. Windshield's a little funky. And some nice Goodyear tires. This is very cool. Been trying to get one of these for a while. The Ford Escort Hot Wheels. Uh, pretty hard to come by. People on eBay seem to think they're worth gold. So, uh, don't see them too much, but they are lensed headlamps. Look at that. And uh, so that's very cool. That's a one that's going to the top of the customized list for sure. The American Ford Escort. We got a couple of vintage VW Baja bugs from Hot Wheels. This is the color changer one. It would go between yellow and red. And the yellow would, uh, when it was hot, it would turn yellow and the flames would blend in. And then when it was cold, it would turn dark red. And you can see as it's chipping the, uh, the yellow showing through. And uh, this one did not have this one, but it's got kind of an old Gold Wheels look to it. And, uh, you know, I did one of these for my daughter uh, as a Rainbow Herbie, because she loves Rainbow and she loves Herbie. And it seemed like a good fit. Dragon Lady. Very cool. So Johnny Lightning, I know that from just looking at uh, AMX. Hard wheels, but uh, great casting. A lot of custom potential there. So, wow. Lots of great stuff. So, uh, again, thanks for watching, liking, subscribing, sharing, all that good stuff. Uh, if you want to learn more about this channel and what we do, watch some Diecast Breakdown episodes, and uh, if you want to see me customize stuff, there's playlists for that as well. But, uh, yeah, thanks to my patrons, thanks to my friends and my family, and especially my brother Justin for this amazing haul of cars, and, uh, Props to my family for putting up with my nonsense as we go hunting for diecasts wherever the road may lead. Again, thank you for being here, and as always, I want to thank you for coming along with me for the ride. So until next time, stay fresh, cheese bags.